I've got 11 new product launches that I've been testing out for about a week and a half, and we've got some surprising hits and some surprising misses. If you're new here, I'm Kate, and I like to look at beauty products through a mostly critical lens to help myself maintain a smaller makeup collection for a YouTuber, but also to give you guys as much information as possible and, you know, help you figure out if a product is really gonna be right for you or not. The term influencer has such a negative connotation, so I wanna be someone you can go to for reviews that you can trust and, you know, to know that you're getting all of the information that you want. If that sounds like your thing, I hope you'll subscribe and let's get into some foundation. I picked up this little sample pack on Sephora of the new Glossier Stretch Fluid Foundation and the best shade match for me in this pack is Light One, which is light skin with peach undertones. I have cool pink undertones, so I think my best shade match is gonna be Light Four, but honestly, it's medium coverage, so the shade worked perfectly fine for me. The Glossier Foundation is $34 and the website says, an 89% skincare-based gel cream foundation that leaves skin looking moisturized with a natural to you finish. Formulated to fuse with skin, never cake on top, to blend seamlessly and wear up to 12 hours. I would not personally consider myself a Glossier girl. I really admire what Emily Weiss built, but you know, for most of the time, I feel like their products are average, not necessarily anything groundbreaking. And I was really expecting to hate this foundation because the Glossier Stretch Concealer really didn't work for me. There was barely any coverage. It was way too wet looking under my eyes and I didn't have a great shade match. So I fully expected to hate this. I love it. I love it. I think it looks phenomenal on the skin. My favorite foundation is Armani Luminous Silk, and this is very different from that. Both have medium coverage, which is my favorite type of coverage level for a foundation, but I would say Armani sets down to a satin finish or even a soft matte finish on me, whereas this has a slightly dewy finish. They say natural to you, and I think for my skin that means slightly dewy because I do have combination skin, so I'm dry in certain places, but in my T-zone I do get quite oily. You can already see some of my oils coming through even though I just did my makeup. So it's it sounds like the finish of this product also kind of depends on your own skin, you know, the climate that you're in, etc. One of my friends told me that she wore this foundation and it had like a practically matte appearance on her, but it has an almost dewy appearance on me. So take that with a grain of salt. I also love that this has 32 shades, which I think is a great shade range for Glossier. I'm really excited to see something like this. It looked really nice on the skin. I did powder my skin with it and I would say after five minutes, the oils came right through, but then it stayed like that for the entire 10 hour wear test that I did. So I ended up falling in love with this because it never got overly dewy and it just looked like skin. It wore beautifully. It never got cakey. It never settled into any pores or texture. At the end of the day, it honestly just like faded in a very natural way where it was kind of like, is she wearing makeup? Is she not? So it did fade. You know, ma makeup is going to fade no matter what you do. It's makeup. You do things throughout the day. You know, your skin moves around. So that's normal, but it faded in a way that was really seamless. And that's why I like it. And I did film one part of the wear test. I believe it was around seven hours. So I'll drop that in now. So it's 7.30 right now and it's four and a half hours into testing the Glossier Foundation, the House Labs Concealer, and the Merit Solo Shadow in Mid-Century. So here's my face. Honestly, I'm really impressed. The Glossier Foundation was a little bit too dewy for me at first and when I powdered it, it looked perfect. And then very quickly, either my natural oils or the oils in the foundation just came through, but it didn't get oilier than that. It just stayed looking really beautifully skin-like. So here's where my little critical thinking cap has to come in. I really like this foundation. I would really like to buy it in the shade Light 4. However, I don't need another foundation. I own one foundation, Armani Luminous Silk, and I love it. So why do I need to own a second foundation if that one is already perfect for me? So love this foundation and I might purchase it when I run out of Armani. And to wrap it up, I would just say if you're looking for a foundation that has medium coverage and a natural skin-like finish that wears really well and doesn't feel too heavy on the skin, then and I think you'll really like this. Oh, and it is totally fragrance free, which is great because I believe the Armani has fragrance and that's the only thing about it I don't like. I'm just gonna go randomly here. So I picked up one shade of the Milk Makeup Odyssey Hydrating Non-Sticky Lip Oil Gloss in the shade Trek. I would describe this as a pinky red with some very, very soft gold shimmer throughout. You can't feel the shimmer on the lips and you honestly can't really even see it on the lips as well. The Milk Lip Glosses are $26 and the website says they're a non-sticky hydrating lip gloss made with 
vitamin rich oils for juicy semi sheer color with a long lasting high shine finish. This product is 90% natural, clean, vegan, cruelty free and paraben free. I agree with all of that. I think this is marketed really well because it's absolutely non sticky. It does feel somewhat hydrating to me and it is a perfect cross between an oil and a gloss. So if you're someone who just finds traditional lip glosses a little too heavy, a little too thick, a little gloopy, then an oil gloss hybrid formula would probably be a really good option for you. I'm gonna review the Say glosses next because there are some similarities between them. This is one of the thinnest glosses I've tried. It's very, very lightweight and there's quite a buttery, slippery quality to it. But unlike a lot of other oily products, it's not overly slippery. Like it, it doesn't migrate outside my lip lines. It's perfectly comfortable to wear. So it's thin, but there is a tiny bit of grip to it, which I enjoy. I do need to give you a heads up though. This has a very strong smell and it's, yeah, it's really intense. It's very artificial creamsicle. So if you've smelled the Kosas lip products and you know that creamsicle smell, it's like that, but about three times as strong and a little bit more artificial smelling. My friend Dev, who's um, Dev's Day on Instagram and she's Dev and Jessmer on YouTube here. I'll put her page linked in the description box. Dev is really not sensitive to smells or tastes at all, but she said that the smell of this was actually a little bit too overwhelming and she found that it tastes like Play-Doh. I didn't notice anything until she said that, but then I applied it and after about five minutes and I started like eating and talking and all that, it started wearing off. And that's when I noticed that it does taste a little bit plasticky. And I think that's what Dev's talking about, like this Play-Doh-y or plasticky quality to it. Once that scent starts dying down, then you kind of notice the more, I don't know, you like the, the smell of the ingredients, you get what I'm saying. So just a heads up on that, not the best like scent or taste experience, but I honestly way prefer it over the Say glosses, which I'll talk about next. One thing that I did notice about this product is it does tend to emphasize texture on my lips. Like, you know, all of our lips just naturally have texture, they have lines. And I find that the thicker formulas tend to smooth over lip lines, whereas really oily formulas tend to kind of settle into my lip lines, maybe not emphasizing texture, but at least not smoothing over them. And I did find, I'll drop in a clip here of like the close up. It just doesn't look the most flattering on my lips. So I would say this gloss would be for you if you like a lightweight product, you like the smell of creamsicles, maybe some of the colors appeal to you, and you do like something that's more of a cross between an oil and a gloss. But if you're someone who aligns typically with my preferences, I would say save your money. I think there are a lot better glosses out there. Next, we have the Say Glossy Bounce High Shine Hydrating Lip Gloss Oil. These are $22. They come in six shades and the website says, finally, the clean gloss you've been waiting for. The slip of a lip oil meets the high shine of a sheer tinted gloss. Glossy Bounce is a long lasting vegan lip gloss oil hybrid with a plush cushiony feel that's never sticky or tacky. Packed with superhero ingredients, Glossy Bounce and envelops, nourishes, and deeply hydrates for your juiciest shine ever. Available in six sheer your lips but better shades, you'll want a glossy bounce for every bag. Sadly for me, the Say glosses are a miss. I have a very interesting relationship with the brand. I either absolutely love their products and it becomes a holy grail, or I absolutely hate the product. And this one for me is a total hate. First of all, it smells, ugh. I'm not just being dramatic, like it's a visceral reaction. It smells extraordinarily strongly of castor oil and it tastes that way too. So it's just, it's not a pleasant experience. And if you go to the Sephora reviews, you'll see tons and tons of people talking about the smell and the taste. And if you do go to Sephora reviews, make sure to click the verified purchases button and then the non-incentivized reviews button. And that will filter out all of the people leaving reviews who received the product in PR or got it for free. Never read the reviews that have been incentivized. Just, just don't do it. So aside from the strong presence of castor oil, I would say it does feel nice on the lips. There is a little bit of a thickness or a cushiony quality to it that I love. I mean, the more cushiony a product, the better in my mind. But at the same time, it is a lip gloss oil hybrid and castor oil, I think I remember seeing it as the first ingredient. And the feeling for me of castor oil is quite slippery, but thick. That's exactly how I would describe this product. There's a cushiony quality to it, but it is super oily. It's really slippery. I found that it just kind of like migrated all outside my lip lines. And also I do think that the, the colors they launched are really beautiful, but there's almost no pigment in them. And so for some of them, you can barely tell the difference on the lips. I totally get what they were going for in it being more of like a sheer your lips, but better thing, but it's so sheer that I just, I don't think it really shows up. Like if you look at the Instagram reel that I filmed or my B-roll, 
or if you look at any influencers content, I think you'll see that you can barely tell the difference between the colors. So that's not my favorite. I would have liked to see the milk makeup level of pigment, which I feel is semi sheer. And I love the way that they did that. So these are just a little too, a little bit too sheer. And lastly, unfortunately, when these wore off, basically the way they wear is the thickness dissipates, like all of that gloss kind of fades away, but you're left with a layer of oil, basically like castor oil on your lips. And it just feels so dry. These dried my lips out like nobody's business. Like I can only wear them for 10 minutes and then I have to go scrub my lips off and put on a lip balm. So the Say Glosses for me are unfortunately a fail, but I really admire the fact that the brand continues to send me PR, even though like every other product for me doesn't work out. And I really appreciate when I can have relationships with brands like that who understand that, you know, my whole thing here is being super, super honest. And so I really appreciate that Say sent these to me and I will be sending all of the shades to my friend Dev so she can do a review as well. Okay, let's do the Merit eyeshadows before I get into what's on my lips. I purchased three of the Merit Solo Cream to Powder Soft Matte Eyeshadows. These are $24 and the website says, a buildable cream to powder shadow for a soft matte wash of color. Apply with brush number two or your finger. Creates a sheer wash of color that could be layered for added depth. Blendable formula applies with a soft matte finish without creasing or fallout. This is like a love it or a hate it product. I know my friend Hope Mess Tom uh, did a video on these and basically said that by the end of the day, they were gone from their eyes. And I know that Tom has oily eyelids, whereas I have dry eyelids. So these on me are crease proof and they last beautifully. You know, any eyeshadow you wear is gonna fade by the end of a work day. It's just the nature of makeup and products and how things go. But this performs really well on me, especially compared to other cream formulas I have. I got these two and a half weeks ago and I am not kidding when I tell you they are the only eyeshadows I have worn since then. I just, I love the ease of use. I find it to be such an easy formula to just quickly pick up and apply with your fingers and then with a clean finger, just blend it and boom, so incredibly easy. But you can also totally apply it or blend it with a brush. Any brush would work. I know the refer brushes work really well with it. Morphe, Wet n Wild, Real Techniques, anything. However, I have heard from people that the darker shades are patchy. They were difficult to work with. So I think if you're using a darker shade and you have to work a little bit at a time, because these set very, very quickly. That's the one thing I will say about them. You have to work quite fast. So don't apply and then do both eyes at the same time. I think that maybe I had such a great experience because this is described as a semi-sheer formula. And since I did get the three lightest shades, it's just naturally gonna be easier to work with because it's, you know, they're closer to my skin tone. So the shades Studio, Vachetta, and Mid-Century are the ones that I got. And I just think they're really easy to work with. But you know, just a heads up, if you have oily eyelids that this may not be the thing for you. This packaging is not my favorite. Favorite. You know, something super similar are the MAC groundwork, groundwork, paint pots, the MAC paint pots. If they had done packaging like that in glass, I think it would have kept the product fresher longer without having to do this lid lock mechanism. It's honestly not a big deal for me, but if you do struggle with uh, your joints and your fingers, I would be aware of that. And I'll show you a wear test of the Merit eyeshadow now. And here's what the Merit eyeshadow in mid-century looks like. I can definitely see a little bit of fading and a little bit of creasing, but it's really not noticeable when I open my eyes. When I look in the viewfinder or in the mirror, it does look like it's it's pretty freshly applied, so very happy with that. So the Merit eyeshadows definitely do fade at the end of the day, but I mean, that's just my experience with all eyeshadows, so it's not a big deal, and I didn't use primer, but you know, they faded in a really nice way. So as you can see, the eyeshadow looked pretty good by the end of the day. I mean, it's it's only natural for products to fade by the end of the day. Like, you're not gonna find something that's gonna last forever, but I thought they faded in a nice way, and the creasing wasn't noticeable unless I closed my eyes and you looked at the creasing, but if my eyes are open, it pretty much looked freshly applied to me, just a little bit faded. And I'll zoom you in so you can see. At this point, I've had my makeup on for about an hour or two, and it looks freshly applied with my eyes open. But if I close my eyes, I think you'll see there's just a tiny bit of creasing, but that happens to me with all eyeshadows, powder, cream, liquid, anything. So personally for me, this is one of the more long wearing cream formulas I've ever tried. And I love that it starts as a cream and sets to a powder. So excited to share what's on my lips because it's a total hit for me. And I think a lot of you are really gonna like it. It's the new Beauty Pie lipstick. And these are the Beauty Pie Future Lipstick Matte Refill and Keep This Case Lipstick. If if you have a membership, they're $20 each. If you don't have a membership, they're $38. And the website says, incredibly light, hydrating, and weightless.
Fearless. Our modern matte lipstick is moisturizing, softening, and extremely smooth. Delivers super light, luxurious pigment, plus hydration and antioxidants. Just slot the lipstick into the gorgeous, polished, recycled aluminum case and refill as many times as you like. So in my July Fails video, I reviewed their like bomb lipstick that was in the refillable case and I really didn't like it. And I said that there was no way to see what the shade name was, but I figured it out and it was my mistake. So with these lipsticks, you will get two separate packages, one with the lipstick color and another with the case. And the case will not have this sticker on it. The sticker actually comes on the bottom of the lipstick bullet itself. And so what you do is you just pull that sticker off and drop it on the bottom of the refillable case. Then you put the lipstick, click it in, and there you go. You've got your refillable case. Now, for a lot of companies, I don't feel that refillable packaging makes sense, but for Beauty Pie, it does because Beauty Pie's whole thing is to be like a one-stop shop. So for consumers that don't really want to be like browsing the internet, watching all the influencers, trying new products from a bunch of different brands, it's for the kind of beauty consumer who loves beauty, but just kind of wants to go to one place to get everything. And that's when the membership makes sense. If you're like me and you buy a bunch of shit, it doesn't make sense. But if you really want to streamline your beauty purchases, then I think the membership is a good option and it makes financial sense. So for people like that, who are just going to use the same company and repurchase the same things over and over again, I think it's a great idea. I'm currently wearing the shade all day long, which is my favorite. And it's this gorgeous, reminds me of like the Kylie Jenner color from a few years back. I would describe it as a rose with a little brown. There's definitely a little bit of mauviness to it, but there's a little bit of like red, rose, and brown mixed in there. So I think it's a color that a lot of people will find flattering. And it just feels mm, so smooth on the lips. So to compare it to something similar, you know, like the MAC Powder Kiss lipsticks, I find those to be really, really drying. This is much creamier than those. I would say it's kind of similar in the feeling. These are creamier than, for example, the L'Oreal Le Volume Mattes that come in the Slim Bullet that I adore. They're more lightweight, more, more slip to them than the Simi Haze matte lipsticks that come in the really chunky packaging. They just honestly feel kind of balmy and they feel more creamy and comfortable to me than like Glossier Generation G. There's like really no feeling of that powder quality that a lot of those matte, creamy matte lipsticks have. It just feels, if I close my eyes, like I'm wearing some kind of bomb. It's more so like a buttery feeling and it's super smooth. It's just, it feels fantastic. I have been wearing this for the past three days. My lips never feel dry when this wears off. And that's pretty rare for me for a matte lipstick formula. So I really, really like these. One last Beauty Pie product. They also have the Smooth Ahead Intensive Lip Balm. This is $12 if you have a membership, 30 if you don't. And it has hemp seed oil, which is rich in essential fatty acids, refined olive oil for softening and renewing, avocado oil, which is ultra nourishing and beeswax, which is vegan beeswax. So Beauty Pie's whole thing is using the same labs that other beauty companies do, but somehow getting rid of the middleman. So if you pay membership prices, you get access to really discounted products. So I'm gonna go on ahead and make the statement that I think they used the same lab or something really similar as the K-Skin lip mask, the one in the like brown pot. Feels and smells exactly the same. It's super thick, has a really nice vanilla smell, but there's there's a greasiness to it. Like, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. Thick, nourishing, but a little greasy on the lips. And that's exactly how I felt about the K-Skin mask. It feels virtually the same. I don't mind that feeling of a little greasiness in a lip balm at all, but my partner John tried the K-Skin one and really didn't like that feeling. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that, but it's a really nice lip balm. What's not a really nice lip balm is this new one from the Inky List. Oh my God, I hate this so much. This is the Inky List Tripeptide Plumping Lip Balm. It is $12.99 and the website says, Clinically proven to plump lips by up to 40% in four weeks, tripeptide plumping lip balm hydrates, repairs, and plumps lips, leaving them looking naturally fuller and healthier. Specially formulated for maximum fullness without any tingle or irritation, the plumping balm works over time to visibly increase lip volume. So now your lips not only look plumper, but are plumper. No filler, no filter, just fuller. Formulated with 6% tripeptide complex to visibly increase lip volume over time for plumper looking more defined lips, together with 6% ultra filler filling spheres, which deliver hyaluronic acid to the lip to plump, retain moisture, and help fill the lip lines. Tripeptide balm enhances fullness, defines lip contours, and reduces the appearance of fine lines increasing around the mouth. With continued use, the proof really is in the plump. For best results, we recommend using it at least three times per day. Wow, will it do my laundry too? Okay, this bothers me. The marketing for this is so goddamn aggressive. It's just, it's just a lip balm. It just has some peptides in it. That's it. It's really, that's it. You know, I've got a hundred other lip balms that do that um, and do it better because this smells and tastes 
disgusting. Ugh. It is like strong rubber, like plastic rubber. It's disgusting. Now I do admire the Inky List for having a fragrance-free product. I, you know, I know that a lot of people really need fragrance-free lip products. So if you've had trouble finding a lip balm that has peptides and hyaluronic acid that's fragrance-free, then maybe you'd like this. But the plastic rubber smell is just so strong. I can't last with this on my lips for more than a minute before I have to wipe it off. It's also one of the thinnest lip balms I've ever tried. I would say it's actually more like a lip serum than a balm. It is super oily. It slides all around my mouth. I don't find it comfortable. I don't find it hydrating. It didn't make my lips feel any better. Basically, I don't like a single thing about this except for the price. This product might be for you if you're someone who likes a really lightweight, thin, slippery, oily kind of lip balm and you're on a budget and you also don't want any fragrance in your products, then you might enjoy this. But otherwise, I would say give it a pass and I'll show you. So my favorite lip balm with peptides is the Revision Youthful Lip Replenisher. And if you haven't seen my massive lip balm video, I purchased 54 lip balms and very thoroughly compared them. I'll leave it linked on the screen above. The Revision Youthful Lip Replenisher was my favorite from that. But a second place win in terms of formulas that have peptides is the Ulla Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. And I really like this one because it feels a little bit thicker than the Inky List. There's a little bit of a buttery quality to it, but it's like a cross between a lip balm and a lip serum. And it smells like creamsicles, but not in a strong artificial way, just in a, in a nice way. It's more like citrus with a hint of cream, whereas the Milk Makeup one is like art, like super super artificial, strong creamsicles. So I would say go for the Ulla Henriksen because I just like everything about this more. Let's go back to complexion products and I'm gonna start with the concealer I'm wearing today. It's the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Hydrating and Deep Puffing Concealer and I have the shade 12 Light Rosy. If you missed my previous video, I'll leave it linked on the screen above. It's all of the new concealers that came out. So I've got House Labs, Makeup Forever, Makeup by Mario, Tower 28, Lip Tinted, and I compared them to my beloved Fit Glow Concealer. So check that video out if you want a very in-depth review and comparison. I swatched all of the concealers. I compared the dry down on my arm, you know, swatches so you can see undertones in like five different lighting angles. So it's a very in-depth review. I'm just gonna talk about the new concealers with my personal experience and be super quick. This is $32 and the website says, a clean, lightweight, long-wearing, non-comedogenic concealer that does more than cover. It visibly blurs, brightens, and conceals with medium buildable coverage that depuffs after two weeks of use. House Tech powered with 20 plus skincare ingredients, including our patent pending fermented Arnica. I think this concealer is awesome. I would disagree with some of the marketing around it. For example, they say this is medium buildable coverage. I think it's actually full coverage. I'm wearing one small layer under my eyes and it covered, I mean, it covered everything I needed to. And so I would say it's actually full coverage and every influencer I've talked to totally agrees it's a full coverage concealer. So don't buy this if you want something that's like lightweight and kind of skin-like. I can't speak to any deep puffing qualities here because I've only been using this concealer for a week and it says you'll notice a difference after two weeks. But to be honest, puffiness isn't my issue. I could use a little more volume under my eyes. I have volume loss, so that's not something I would see results from. But I would say this is the kind of concealer I would recommend if you like something full coverage that has a soft matte finish under the eyes and is very long wearing. So, you know, you're not someone who wants like a very dewy finish. You don't want something lightweight. This does have quite a thick consistency and it is a little bit on the drier side. So under my eyes today, the only only con I have with this product is that it does make my under eyes look just a tiny, tiny bit dry. So I do have to prep my skin really well when I wear this, but it is incredibly long wearing because of the fact that it dries down. So I'll zoom you in so you can see what I'm talking about. So this diagonal fine line that runs from here all the way under here, that line is something that typically my Fit Glow and my Live Tinted concealers don't highlight as much. So this is just a little bit more of a drier formula. Like that line is just a little emphasized. Same thing with this line which isn't quite as deep as this eye but I think you can just see like well, especially when I smile these lines just look they look a little parched but from far away I think I see what they mean about the blurring quality it does have this kind of like airbrushed finish from afar it's just up close a little bit drying so my recommendation is if you want a full coverage concealer that's really long wearing I would go fit glow or live tinted those are my two favorite concealers this is now officially number three I'll be super fast with the rest of the concealers this is the makeup by Mario surreal skin awakening concealer and I got the shade 160. These are $29 and the website says, a pro performance multi-use concealer that visibly lifts, blurs, and brightens the under eye and complexion 
for an awakened appearance with a natural skin-like finish. This medium coverage, buildable formula conceals even the darkest under eye circles. Formulated with lift lock technology, the caffeine infused concealer de-puffs, tightens, and smooths while the self-setting formula locks it all in, resulting in a lifted, awakened look. All 22 shades are crease proof and long wearing. This concealer made my eyes look so bad. Not only does this make my eyes look super, super dry because it sets down and, you know, really sets down to a dry finish, but it creased like crazy. I just find that, you know, the more blendable, the more stretchable a concealer, the more slip it has to have. And so because of that slip, I find that those concealers are just not great for under the eyes. I feel like I would really like this as a foundation. Like if I just dotted it all over my face, I'm actually wearing a concealer as a foundation today, the ColourPop one. So because it's blendable and stretchable, I feel like it would be better used all over the face, but under the eyes, it's a creasy, dry mess. Also, the shade range is very bizarre. It's super, super yellow. And if you go to Sephora and you swatch them, it's not just because I have cool skin. I've heard a lot of people say the shade range is just weird. So I think if you want a medium coverage concealer, the best one is the Live Tinted Hue Skin Serum Concealer. That's medium to full. So you can totally add more coverage if you want. And it has a really beautiful skin-like, but kind of dewy hydrated finish, very similar to the Fit Glow. Again, if you go to the Sephora reviews and you click verified purchases and non-incentivized reviews, you'll see that a lot of people are having a similar experience that I had. And lastly, in complexion, we have the Tower 28 Swipe All Over Hydrating Serum Concealer, and they sent me the shades BH and BU, which are the two lightest shades. These are $22. Tower 28 always impresses me with their great price points. And the website says, a hydrating concealer that glides on like a serum, but has the medium buildable coverage power to instantly cover dark circles, redness, and blemishes. Swipe on to swipe out dark circles, redness, and blemishes. It's weightless, easy to blend, and has a hydrating skin-like natural finish that doesn't cling to dry patches. Earth-sensitive pledge. Swipe packaging is made from 50% post-consumer recycled plastic as part of our commitment to sustainable packaging. I really admire the fact that Tower 28 thinks about sustainability and is using post-consumer recycled plastic. I would love to see more brands do that. Unfortunately, this one didn't work out for me, and I'm not surprised because Tower 28 complexion products never work for me. I'm basically the antithesis of the consumer for them. I had a very similar experience with this concealer as I did to the Makeup by Mario. It is so thin and stretchable and blendable. I found it really creasy. It also just totally emphasized my fine lines. It looked dry. The shade range is also weird. It's super, super yellow. So unfortunately there isn't a shade for me. BH was way too light and I think DTLA still looked like it would be too yellow and a little too dark for me. I also don't think this is medium buildable coverage. I think it's just medium. There's no way you can build this up to full coverage. However, I would say this is extremely similar to the Kosas Revealer Concealer, which I know Amanda Z loves, and she did a video where she compared both formulas, like one on each eye. I hated the Kosas Concealer. It did the same thing. It didn't give me enough coverage. It looked so dry under my eyes. So I think if you loved the Kosas Concealer, you're probably gonna love the Tower 28, but if you didn't, then I would probably skip this one. And lastly, we have the Naked Sundays SPF 50 Glow and Go Lip oils. These are $22. They sent me all four shades. And this is actually a relaunch. So the previous product apparently had a really strong chemical SPF taste, and they've said that they reformulated it to have no chemical sunscreen taste. The website says, protect your pout with this hydrating, softening, non-sticky lip oil infused with antioxidants that include vitamin C, amino acids, lycopene, and vitamin E for that perfect air kiss. Okay, that's interesting. Infused with watermelon extract to intensely hydrate and moisten your lips while fighting free radical damage, rich in vitamin C amino acids and lycopene to nourish your lips. Raspberry seed oil adds ellagic acid to the mix, which reduces collagen destruction. Also has vitamin E for added antioxidants that help fight free radicals. Tomato extract for added anti-inflammatory properties, plus high in vitamin C and K, SPF 50, broad spectrum UVA and UVB. So I just got these in the mail and I tried the clear one yesterday and I can confirm there is a chemical sunscreen taste still. I've seen a lot of people say that they virtually cannot taste anything, but I'm very sensitive to smells and taste and I can definitely taste the sunscreen in here. But compared to all other chemical sunscreen lip products, I would say that these are probably the most subtle that I've found. And it only really started becoming noticing once the actual product was wearing off and like the scent was wearing off because there's some kind of pina colada fragrance. You can tell that they're just putting the fragrance in here to mask the sunscreen because I can smell the sunscreen, but it's like pina colada sunscreen. Anyways, you get what I'm saying. So they're really beautiful and I'll film my myself applying all of them after this video. This is a very, very, very 
thin, oily formula. Okay, nope, it's not once it's wearing off. I can taste it. Yep, yep, I can taste it. Unfortunately for me, I what can I say? I mean, I'm sorry, Naked Sundays, but I can taste the sunscreen still. I know, the whole relaunch was so that you couldn't taste the sunscreen, but like, it's still very much present to me. But I would say if you're not typically sensitive to smells or tastes, or you just don't mind the chemical sunscreen taste, then these are really nice. I mean, they're SPF 50, they add a beautiful shine to the lips. They just feel like a lip oil, like a thin, slippery lip oil. So very, very lightweight on the lips, sheer flush of color. So yeah, that might be something that appeals to you. But for me, I like a product that's thicker. And personally, my favorite sunscreen lip product, because I know someone's going to ask, is the Color Science Lip Shines. Those are a mineral sunscreen lip formula and they're SPF 35 with zinc oxide. Zinc oxide typically leaves a white cast on the lips, but these have a pretty noticeable pigment to them and they just feel like a nice, comfortable, balmy lip gloss. And they come in a bunch of different shades. The clear one is actually pretty white on the lips, but all of the ones that have a tint are beautiful and they just smell and taste like peppermint. So personally for me, if you're sensitive to the way that, okay, I, ugh, I gotta take this off, this is disgusting. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, I hate, I hate the taste of chemical sunscreen. Oh no. Yeah, I would say that if you're sensitive to chemical sunscreen taste, I would skip these and probably go for a mineral sunscreen lip product with something that's tinted so it doesn't have a, a white cast. And you know, the Color Science lip shines are expensive, but for me, they're so worth it. I've been through like a million tubes of them and they're just fantastic. Oh, I can't get it out of my mouth. Do I have water? Oh no. Oh well, well, at least we're ending on the video so I can go wash my mouth out. <laughs> okay, this is what I get for talking about a product before thoroughly testing it first. I just filmed a swatch video applying all four of these and it turns out they have four Four different scents and that means that they have four different levels of taste of chemical sunscreen so the clear one for me I actually thought was the best this is coconut and I mean it's noticeable at first but it's more noticeable once the scent wears off salted caramel was a little bit more noticeable than coconut but not as much of a chemical sunscreen taste as these two black cherry has a pretty noticeable chemical sunscreen taste right off the bat but watermelon was the worst that was the one I tried the video when I was like oh that's so gross this is the one that I definitely would avoid but if you really want to try these out and you just know that a mineral sunscreen lip is not for you, I would maybe go with the clear one coconut. I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more very honest, detailed reviews. I'll leave my new concealers video on the screen for you if you wanna keep watching new content. And wherever you are, I hope you're having an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.